Merry COBOL! For the Christmas video, since I couldn't find any Christmas themed programming languages, I decided just to do an old programming language. I hope this doesn't ruin your holiday season! Also, I hope you like my snow background. COBOL stands for Common Business Oriented Language. Note that it is not orientated, which is a mispronunciation that annoys me on the same level as GIF. If you pronounce this word as GIF because graphics begins with a hard G sound, then you are now REQUIRED to pronounce COBOL as COBOL. Except don't, because that would be silly. COBOL was created in- wait, 1959? That's a while ago. At a conference called Codazzle, which stood for the Conference on Data Systems Languages. COBOL syntax was based off of Greg Hopper's idea that programming languages would be similar to actual languages. Even though COBOL is almost 60 years old, it isn't dead. COBOL is still used today in many businesses, such as banks. COBOL syntax was designed to be easily readable and understandable, so to add something, you say add 4 to variable instead of variable plus equals 4. You can also do subtract 4 from variable, which means at least sometimes, there are reserved words that aren't very important, like to and from. So how many reserved words are there? Well, a lot. Hey! Remember how you said caps lock was useless? Well, in COBOL, almost everything is capitalized, so you need to use caps lock sometimes! Well, COBOL's not case sensitive, so you could technically write a program like this. But don't, because that's dumb. In this video, I will be using the Open COBOL IDE, which uses the new COBOL version of COBOL to compile programs. COBOL programs are divided into several groups called divisions. They start with an identification division, which contains the program ID. And that's it. The next part is the environment division, which I never found myself using. Since this video isn't meant to go that deeply into COBOL, I won't be using it in this video at all. Next, there is the data division. Variables, or data items as they are called in COBOL, are stored in the working storage section. To declare a simple data item, you type 77 followed by the data item's name. You then type the phrase picture is followed by a 9 if it's a number, or x if it's a string. You then type parentheses and put how many places the value can hold inside. So this data item can hold up to the number 99. Why 77? Oh, you're here. Data items in COBOL have a hierarchy system that I won't go into in this video, and 77 just means that this data item cannot have anything below it. You could use 1 in place of 77 and it would still work fine. The final division of a COBOL program is the procedure division. Here is where most of your code is run. The paragraph at the top, yes, it's called a paragraph, It's the one that runs first. This simple program uses the display verb, yes, it's called a verb, to display the phrase hello world. You might notice that each line ends with a period. It is used in a similar way to the semicolon in Java and other programming languages. It marks the end of a statement. The code also needs to be indented a certain way, and you probably are used to indenting anyway. Unless you like making your code unreadable. Another thing, you can't make any line longer than 72 characters. This would already be a problem, but COBOL forces indentation, and the commands look like this! Thankfully, at least for this command, you can put it on two lines. Now let's make a truth machine in COBOL. Except it's Christmas time, so let's make a naughty or nice machine. Why are you doing a truth machine? COBOL's not so Derek! Gosh, I don't feel well. A seasick crocodile! I'm a... Cayman! In the working storage section, we declare a data item. It can hold a number from 0 to 9, since it is an integer with a single place value. The word pick is used to shorten the phrase picture is. COBOL has a lot of commands that are shorter versions of things that already exist. Sometimes, there are several of them that mean the same thing. This line accepts info from the user and stores it into a data item. Next, if said data item is equal to zero, the word naughty is displayed. When inside an if block, you only put a period after the last command in the block. This line performs a nice paragraph until INP is not equal to one, since that's literally what it says. Also, INP is never told to change after it is accepted, meaning when it is one, it will be one forever. The nice paragraph displays the word nice with no advancing, which means without a new line. So, you could also do without advancing? No, without is not a reserved word, but there are so many ways to just write greater. Blah! Yeah, but COBOL doesn't care about your opinions. I better be marked nice by the machine, or else. What? This machine is broken. Let me try my card. Yay! Also, this IDE doesn't have a stop button, so I need to close it with the test manager and relaunch it after being told nice. That's not very nice if you open COBOL IDE! Now that that's over, let's do a 99 bottles of beer program. But it's Christmas time, so it's 99 bottles of nog. Yay, nog! All I need is eggs, and I'll be able to make some nog! Hey, why didn't you invite me to be in your Christmas episode? Say, I could use you to get the eggs for the eggnog. What? You're gonna eat me?! No, I was just gonna ask you to pick up a dozen from the store. I'm not an insane person. Oh. 
By the way, subscribe to my channel, it's way better than this one. Oh, and I'm not gonna run errands for you, Creature. I hate you, and here comes the pain! Freeze, mister! Joe, but don't feel like that, it's Christmas time! The 99 bottles of Nog program only needs one data item, the number of bottles, which is set here. Next, we set the value of it to 99. Next, we use this delightfully, and by that I mean annoyingly, long line to run the bottle paragraph. This function is a while loop, but it is way longer than, say, a while loop in Java, albeit more readable. The bottle paragraph is very self-explanatory. It displays how many bottles you have, and then follows it up with bottles of Nog if there are more than one, and bottle of Nog if there is only one. It then repeats that, but without, I mean, WITH NO, on the wall. We take one down, pass it around, and then subtract one from bottles. Lastly, if bottles is greater than zero, we just copy what happened up here. If it is zero, we just stays there are no more. After each verse, we just play a line of NOTHING! Which separates the verses and makes it easier to read. The eggnog's done! Hooray! 99 bottles of nog on the wall, 99 bottles of nog! Take one down, pass it around, 98 bottles of nog on the wall! Another thing I wanted to say is, in the book Cobalt for Dummies, there's an entire chapter dedicated to fixing the Y2K bug. So that's great. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you whenever I make another video. Also, Merry Cobalt.